Good morning, Coach. My question for you is really what um, what challenges do the Tulane office possess, specifically the rushing attack? Uh, and can you talk specifically about their two running backs, uh, Spears and Carroll? Yeah, uh, well, they had a they had a good one last year that went to the NFL. I mean, these guys they they they're you're right. Their running attack is is problematic. They do a lot of different offense. Uh, you know, Willie's been a offensive guy for a long time and has been successful everywhere he's been. Yet, you know, you add Will Hall with that, who who brings some 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 pretty good pedigree with him as well. They they just they run a lot of offense. You can tell they got really smart kids that that can handle a lot of that offense. Uh, you know, they got a lot of experience with their O-line coming back and tight ends coming back and, you know, a couple really good backs coming back. Um, you know, just the amount of stuff that they do. <clears throat> and I think the big thing is, is are we going to be able to handle the speed of the game and and handle the physical nature with, with how they play? The same thing with what they do defensively. They do a lot of different defense. Their D-line is really good. They're good against the, 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 the rush. Um, it's the same guys that they had last year that – that gave us fits. I mean, there's just a lot of there's there, there's a there's a lot of good stuff that they do offensively and defensively, and it's all predicated towards line of scrimmage, physical nature with how they play. Thanks, Andy. Next up, uh, Greg Bailey, ABC 13. Greg, hey, Dana, if I could, just could you get a little more specific? How often have you guys been able to practice since we we were last able to talk? And and do you have any any sense? You you touched on a little bit. Do you have any sense of any kind of improvements you were able to make over that span? I think it gets to a point where you're just, you're hanging on until you can play. I don't think you can continue to improve. I, we've tried and our, our, our good on good periods that we've had have been very productive, but until you're, until you're in a game and the speed of the game is different, you're playing somebody else, uh, you know, can you handle the speed of the game? Can you handle the physical nature with how a game is actually played? You, you can't tell that until you play, you know, and that, that's, what's, that's what's the problem with us having, you know, been ready to play for the last three weeks and haven't. You know, this Tulane game could have got moved up a week ago. I, I tried to get our commissioner to do that. They wouldn't budge as they had a, you know, Tulane had a bye week. We could have moved it up and then played Memphis next week, but that didn't happen. But anyway, we just, we've been sitting here waiting, and until you – until you like actually get into that game, you, you're you're not going to know, you know. So, I, I commend our guys on on staying ready. Um, I think if I would have got them out there and we would have like practiced really hard and scrimmaged like we would in say like a spring practice situation, I think we would have got worse, you know. So, we've been ready, we're, we've stayed ready, and now it's time to go play. And then at that point, we're going to see what we got. All right, up next, Christy Reichen, Associated Press. Christy, go ahead. Dana, I just wondered, is there anything in your career that you can compare this year to with the situation of everything you've had to go through without even getting to play a game? No, uh, there no, no, you can't compare this to anything. Uh, in my 22-year career or whatever it is, I've had two games. I've had – before this year, I've had two games canceled. We had 9-11 – which that, that was one game that was canceled, and then we rescheduled it later in the year. And then two years ago at WVU, we had a hurricane game that NC State got canceled. But then you're right back on track the next week. You know, this, this, is, this is on a whole nother level. Um, you know, the one thing that, that, that has given us hope is we sit here on Saturdays and we watch other teams playing. Uh, we know we're ready to go. We're, we, you know, we, we think we have a good football team and we're excited about playing. Uh, the fact that some games got canceled and postponed out of our control, um, you know, I commend our team for just hanging in there and understanding that conference matters. And this Thursday, we get a chance to play a conference game, and we're excited about it. And I wondered, like, you kind of touched on that, but the level of excitement within your team when you work for so long and you think you're going to play and then you don't, like, what's the level of excitement this week for your guys? I'd say it's pretty high. Uh, we had a we had a pretty good spirited practice yesterday, and we'll get back out there this afternoon. and And uh, we're on track. We know what the schedule is, and we know we got an opponent coming here on Thursday. So, I'd say it's I'd say it's uh, I'd say it's pretty high. Uh, you know, I think we're all excited about getting out there and playing. All right. Next up, Vanessa Richardson, KPRC. Then I'll swing it back around to Joseph. Vanessa. 
Hey, Dana, how would you describe the mood of your team the last couple of weeks? I'm sure there were a lot of ups and downs. And were you kind of using this as an opportunity to teach them to control what they can control and whatnot? Yeah, definitely control what you can control. I, the one thing I've been proud of is I think, I, think we're, <laughs> I think we're probably closer as a football team than we've been just because we've been through some, some things and some setbacks and some things that we can't control and we continue to do the right thing and continue to practice and stay ready. We know this isn't on us. So, you know, we just hang in there, you know, and I, I think we've all done a good job, players and coaches and coaches and players of, of taking this as an opportunity to be able to get to know each other a little bit better too. You know, there's been some meetings that wouldn't have happened. You get into the routine of, of just coaching you know, and preparing for a game, you, you, you forget the human element to some things. So, you know, I've seen, I've seen a team that's kind of gotten pretty close, you know, and, and main, maintained uh, a positive attitude and maintained good practice skills. And, and, um, and, 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 you know, I think we're in a good spot. I think our morale is high and I think we're ready to go. Thanks, Vanessa. Uh, JD, you got one more? Hey, Dana, uh, has there been some value to – being able to watch some of the other games going on since you're not playing and maybe seeing what other teams are doing, aren't doing, maybe what they focused on in camp, that kind of stuff? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I've been, I've been calling around and, you know, I've just sat and watched TV like a normal fan, like you guys probably have on, on Saturdays. Um, <clears throat> you know, trying to take some things that, that how, what the end game stuff's like, whether it's, silence or crowd noise or music or pre-snap stuff uh, you know you know creating your own energy on the sidelines I think is, is going to be important you know just because you're, you're not you're not in a stadium that's going to be a hundred percent or anywhere close to it um, I just think you get to a point where until you get in that game situation you just don't know you just don't know what you got and we got a lot of returning guys that have played a lot of football. We're really experienced. So I think we will settle down really quick and be able to adjust to it really quick. Uh, but that's going to be a key component to what we're doing just as far as settling down. Um, you but, also, yeah. you're a, the team that they, they showed us what the decal is going to look like, the equality sticker. Uh, you know, we, we talked to you at the March. Uh, what does that symbolize to you and the team to, to have that equality sticker? Yeah, it's a it's a university wide sticker that you know all all sports are going to kind of take part of and stuff. I know Chris is really is very important to, to uh, Director Pesman to you know have something that each sport can kind of hang their hat on. Uh, so the equality sticker that has that right there is just something that's that's really unified our entire athletic department and something that we can stand by. Uh, you know, not only just as a football program but as an athletic department as well. All right, anything else for Coach? Got one more question from Sam Khan. If not, I'll let Sam fire away really quickly. Hey, Dana. Um, kind of off topic, your boy Leach goes back to Lexington on Saturday. I'm curious of anything that you remember from that time, maybe visiting Lexington or what he was like uh, 23 years ago. Yeah, I got that message, and I started thinking about that, Sam. Sorry I didn't get back to you, but um... – you know, I was trying. Yeah, I didn't spend a whole lot of time there, honestly. I, I did, I did a camp or two, and it was kind of when the air raid thing was really getting going. I mean, we did the air raid stuff at Iowa Wesleyan and Valdosta State, but this was the first time it was on, you know, the SEC level. You know, and and they kind of took it by storm a little bit. You know, so uh, Mike's been in that situation before. You know, you forget that he was there a long time ago. I mean, you know, Mississippi State's. Wasn't surprising what they did, you know, a couple of weeks ago and 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 doing that at LSU. They got to find a level of consistency, I guess, because they didn't play great last week. But uh, you know, I was at the the one game I went to back in the day was when Alabama went up to Lexington and lost. You know, they they beat them, and that was a huge win for for Coach Mommy and for for Coach Leach and. You know, and that, that's kind of when the ball started rolling in the right direction. So it's going to be fun to see Mike do that. I think, I think he's going to have the capabilities of being able to beat anybody anytime. He's okay. always possessed that. Did, did, did the success there kind of validate it? Because it was in the SEC and a place that was three yards and clouded. Does it kind of validate what they were doing and what you guys were doing, you know, previously? It was ahead of its time at that point in the SEC. Now everybody's doing it, right? So, I mean, it's funny how – 
20 years ago, they go to Lexington, have success. You know, Hal's got all kinds of job offers. And then Leach goes to OU and then obviously Texas Tech and Washington State. And now he's back in the SEC in the league where, where they're all – they're all kind of spreading it out and throwing it around now, right? So uh, what he, what they did 20 years ago is finally got to a point where they're all doing it. It's kind of fun to watch. Cool. All right, thanks, everybody, for joining us. We'll uh, see you back for player availability at 1.30. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys.